Hello, thank you for joining us this evening. It's evening in London anyway. Um, we have attendees from all over the world with us today. Um, uh, we're talking about the importance of pH balancing. So um, let's get going. I'm your presenter, Elizabeth Clemens, from Live Blood London, where we practice live blood analysis and also Live Blood Online, where we train people from all over the world in live blood analysis. And as I say today, we're covering the importance of pH balancing. So why is it so important, how to measure it, and what to do to get balanced? So, please do ask questions throughout. You should see a panel on your screen where you can answer, uh, enter questions. Have a look at that, familiarize yourself with it. If you could enter um, a quick yes in the box, please let us know that you've located it. Uh, we'd appreciate that. We'll give you a few minutes to do that. Um, okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thanks. Uh, let's get going. So pH balance of the human bloodstream is recognized by all medical physiology texts as one of the most important biochemical balances in all of human chemistry. Now this is a hot subject with lots of information. I've tried to keep the information to a bare minimum to get the really important facts across. So the same will go with the solutions at the end. We can't go into great detail here in such a short webinar, but we will try to cover as much of the important details as possible. We'll begin with why pH is so important. We'll cover how to measure it and then go on to ways of keeping it in balance. So is everybody okay with that? Yep. Good. Okay. So pH stands for potential hydrogen, which measures the degree of concentration of hydrogen ions in a substance or solution. It's measured on a logarithmic scale of 0 to 14. Higher numbers mean more alkaline, lower numbers more acidic, and the middle, which is number 7, is neutral. As I say, it's logarithmic, so for example, 7, which is neutral, 6, which is more acidic, is 10 times more acidic than 7. And 5, which is more acidic, will be 100 times more acidic than 7, 10 times more acidic than 6. As I say, that's a logarithmic scale there. Now, what causes acidity? The body becomes pH imbalanced and overly acidic primarily as a result of three things, ingestion of acids, creating acids, and improper neutralization and elimination of acids. So the first one, ingestion, that's ingestion of processed foods, sugar, packaged foods, takeaways, fast food, meat, dairy, coffee, alcohol, etc. They all lower the pH of the body. And an overload can overwhelm your body's ability to neutralize them. And the second one, creating acids. Well, the microfoams such as anaerobic bacteria, yeasts, and fungi proliferate when your body becomes acidic. These pathogens and microfoams also create acidifying toxins in your body, which add to the problem. And an improper neutralization and elimination of, of acids. When your body's buffering acid system becomes depleted or compromised, acids then begin to, begin to build up. As the acids continue to build up, they damage all systems within your body. Now, the pH of our body is also very important because this controls the speed of our body's chemical reactions, enzyme activity, and the speed that electricity moves through our body. A car battery is acid. We want it to be hot, ready, fast. A torch battery, on the other hand, is alkaline. We need it to be cool, burn out, long and slow. If we become too acidic, we become hot and fast, overly stressed, quick to anger, burned out, exhausted. Does that sound familiar? 
Now, what we eat and drink will impact our body's pH level, which then controls the activity of every metabolic function happening in our body. Are you beginning to see how important this is? A hundred years ago, this was less of a problem. We may have had other problems then, but we ate a much more natural diet. We only ate foods that were available locally and in season. We didn't have anything like all the chemicals we have today in the air, our food, our water, all our cleaning cupboards, cosmetics, chemicals, chemicals in our furniture, our houses, paint, all going into our water system and polluting us further. Now our foods are manufactured, our soil is depleted of minerals, our diet has become very acidic, and all the chemicals, pesticides, steroids, and antibiotics in our foods, and life in general, have added fuel to the fire. Ready-made meals, fast foods, frozen food, canned, tin, processed foods, all of this impacts our body's pH level. pH is also behind our intracellular activity, as well as the body's ability to utilize enzymes, vitamins, and minerals. So this is why pH is one of the first things to be looked at if you are experienced imbalance in your body in any way. And since our pH level is a direct result of what we eat and drink, to address the imbalance, we need to look at what we have been eating or drinking that has impacted our pH to see what has caused it. Now, your body will always strive to keep your organs, blood, fluids, and tissues functioning properly. In order to do that effectively, each part of your body must operate in its optimal, optimal pH range. When your body is overly burdened trying to compensate for pH imbalances, it suffers immensely. These day-to-day -day build up of acids affects each of us differently depending on our genetics, lifestyle and diet, but this excess stress eventually leads to toxicity and illness. Left unchecked, acidification can contribute or indirectly lead to arthritis, blood pressure, uh, blood pressure abnormalities, blood sugar challenges, digestive problems, fungal problems, candida and yeast, headaches, heartburn, acid reflux, hot flushes, inflammation of joints, insomnia, lack of energy, premature aging, skin problems, joint stiffness, stress and tension, weight gain, and many other problems. Now, Dr. Young is the author of the miracle, uh, the pH miracle diet, and he writes about one of the most well-known discoveries of the cause of obesity. He's shown that fat is actually an over-acidification problem. What does that mean? Well, the body creates fat cells to carry acids away from your vital organs. So these acids literally don't choke your organs to death, and that's what fat is. Fat is saving your life. Fat is actually a response from the body to an alarming over-acidic condition. Your weight problem is more complex than simply a dieting problem. It's actually an acid problem. Now, pH balance also affects the absorption of minerals. If our pH is out of balance, we become mineral deficient, leading to other imbalances. Our digestive system and what we feed our body impacts our pH and determines whether we have dynamically good health or imbalance and disease. Are well, you beginning to get the picture now of how important pH balancing is? Uh, on to pH and disease. Human blood stays in a very narrow range of 7.35 to 7.40. Below or above this means symptoms and disease, even leading to death. If the human blood goes out of that range, it does lead to death. The blood will do anything to maintain its pH balance, including leaching minerals, usually calcium and magnesium from the bones, and this is a huge cause of osteoporosis and tooth decay. When pH goes out of balance, microbial forms in the blood can change shape, mutate, and grow. When pH goes off, enzymes that are constructive can become destructive. And when pH goes off, the oxygen delivery to the cells suffers. Now, research has shown that low oxygen delivery to cells is a major factor 
in most degenerative conditions and cancer growth. In fact, research has shown that cancer cells thrive in acidic environments but perish in alkaline environments. So it's all about the internal environment, also known as the terrain. Bacteria and disease is a consequence of a polluted environment, just as rats and vermin appear when rubbish is dumped because they wish to feed off it. Now, bacteria exist all around us, yet we don't get sick all the time because we have an immune system or immune systems that recognize these organisms and remove them from the body. But when the body becomes acidic or toxic, similar to that rubbish dump, the immune system is compromised. The body then becomes fertile soil for bacteria, yeast and mold and hence disease. Also, if the pH of the blood goes more acid, fatty acids begin to stick to the walls of the arteries resulting in heart disease. Minerals have a different pH levels at which they can be assimilated into the body. This includes iodine, which is one of the most important minerals for the proper functioning of the thyroid. Malfunctioning thyroids have been connected to arthritis, heart attacks, diabetes, cancer, depression, weight gain, fatigue and more. Now, how many people do you know with thyroid problems? A chronically over acidic pH corrodes body tissue, slowly eating into the 60,000 miles of veins and arteries, like acid eating into marble. If left unchecked, it will interrupt all cellular activities and functions from the beating of your heart to the neural firing of your brain. In summary, over acidification interferes with life itself leading to all sickness and disease. Now it's quite simple. These basic principles of biochemistry have been taught to every medical school student. You would think that modern medicine would look at these principles of biochemistry and attempt to bring people back into balance and health through the food they eat, but unfortunately not. The founder of medicine, Hippocrates, said, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. So how do we test our pH levels? How do we rebalance them? And what do we need to do? An alkaline diet based on the new biology. Dr. Young, the author of the pH miracle diet, has done a lot of research into the effects of pH. Um, it has, um, there has been a lot of sort of conflicting information on pH numbers, so we're going to stick with Dr. Young here. Dr. Young and his new biology most simply states that over acidification of the body is a single underlying cause of all disease. In contrast, the old biology, based on the work of Louis Pasteur in the late 1800s, which is what our medical uh, books are based on at the moment, stems from the idea that disease comes from germs which invade the body from the outside. This has been shown to be erroneous. Dr. Young and many of Louis Pasteur's fellow microbiologists and biochemists discovered long ago that when the body's in a healthy alkaline balance, germs find it very difficult to get a foothold. Just the same as a pH balanced fish tank or swimming pool doesn't go green and then black with fungal growth, well our body is exactly the same. Now if you are in poor health or overweight, Dr. Young's pH miracle has helped many people. His book is available on Amazon. I do highly recommend it. Um, if you're not sure, you can make an appointment for live blood analysis, which also shows if the body is too acidic, and advises on getting pH balanced through diet and supplements. It's also a great way of getting visual proof of the damage that's been done, and also to be able to gauge improvements um, as you uh, go through treatments. Live Blood London practices live blood analysis in southwest London, and you can get more info at www livebloodlondon.com or info at livebloodlondon.com. Meanwhile, here are some changes you can make now that will change your pH. Start measuring before you make the changes to see the difference as well as feel it. pH testing strips are available from some health food shops, um, but they're also 
plenty of choice online. If you have any problems, email us and uh, we'll see if we can help. So, what to do? The pH Miracle Living Acid Alkaline Saliva and Urine Test. First, upon waking in the morning, test your saliva with a pH test paper. When you get out of bed, lick and wet the end of the pH test strip with your saliva. Note the colour change, write down the pH number. Do this before brushing your teeth, drinking, smoking or even thinking of eating any food. The optimum saliva pH should be 7.2. I'd never recommend putting your tongue onto the test strip because we don't know what chemicals are there. But if you can sort of get a little bit of um, saliva up and then dip the test paper into it, I think that would be uh, far more um, healthy. So next, test your first urine in the morning. This is the urine that has been stored up in your bladder during the night, so it's ready to be eliminated when you get up. You need to urinate on the strip of pH test paper. Note the colour change, write down the pH number. The first urine should run optimally between pH 6.8 to 7.2. If your first urine pH is lower than 6.8, you are deficient in alkaline buffers and need to move to a more alkaline diet rich in fresh green vegetables and fruits. If your first urine pH is higher than 7.2, your alkaline buffers are sufficient to neutralize the acidic foods and drinks you ingested the day before. To balance the pH of the urine, you need to move away from acidic foods and drinks and begin ingesting liberal amounts of electron-rich green vegetables, low-sugar fruits, and healthy polyunsaturated fats. More of that later. Next, test your second morning urine before eating any food. This number should be the pH of your second urine after you have eliminated the acid load from the day before in the first urine. The acid should be gone by now the second time you go to the bathroom. So your pH reading should ideally be 7.2 or higher. If the pH is lower than 6.8, you're in a state of latent tissue acidosis, which is not good. And you are deficient in alkaline buffers such as bicarbonate, sodium, potassium, magnesium and calcium. The lower pH is also indicative of a high diet, of a diet high in protein and an increase in acids from proteins including nitric, sulfuric, phosphoric and uric acids. So eliminate from the diet proteins from beef, chicken, turkey, pork and fish to normalize pH at 7.2 while eating liberal amounts of green foods and green drinks and healthy polyunsaturated fats. More on uh, getting your proteins later. So make sure that you check your urine and saliva pH between meals, i.e. between breakfast and lunch and between lunch and dinner. The pH should always be between 7.2 to 8.4 right after meals and between 6.8 to 7.2 a couple of hours after meals. So these tests should show the following. They should show the efficiency of the digestive system to deal with what you ate the night before i.e. the first and second morning urine and saliva pH numbers. These numbers will change from day to day if you are eating an acidic diet, but if you change to eating more alkaline foods, you will see the pH of the urine and saliva become more constant and balanced at a pH of 7.2 or higher. How well you treat yourself in general is also shown. How strong the salivary glands stomach, pancreas, gallbladder and liver are in dealing with excess acidity. This number shows the overall state of your health, the condition of the alkaline reserve of your body, which reflects the diet you have been eating over the last few months and years. The pH number stays rather constant and will only change after some work has been done in alkalizing and energizing the body. Since the saliva and urine pH is an indicator of intracellular pH, saliva and urine pH readings should never be below the pH of the phosphate buffer system, which is 6.8. So, a conclusion. 
Monitoring your saliva and urine pH puts the responsibility of caring for your health back into your hands. Measuring the saliva and urine pH guides your therapy and shows you how living, eating and drinking determines the quality and quantity of your life. You should monitor your saliva and urine each day for at least 12 weeks or until you establish your balanced pH at 7.2. Once you have established a balanced saliva and urine pH at 7.2, you can reduce the number of tests to once a day or two or three times a week. So, now what to do to balance your pH? If you're not suffering from disease but want to keep in balance, alkalizing your body does not have to take a radical change to your eating habits. Most important thing, however, is that you take steps to add highly alkaline foods into your diet. Green vegetables are the most highly alkaline foods on the planet. If you're going to have a steak for dinner, for example, which is highly acid forming, be sure to at least start off your meal with a big salad, obviously with no cheese um, and a light dressing, and have steamed fresh veggies as a side dish instead of the baked potato, which is also acid forming. This will help, to, uh, help your body to counteract the acidic byproducts with healthy alkaline byproducts, i.e. creating a balance. Another tip is to supercharge your body with an alkalizing drink. I use Dr. Schultz's Superfoods Plus. For me, this is the best food supplement on the planet, and I recommend it to all of my clients. And that's available from www.besthealthcenter.com or from our website, www.livebloodlondon.com. Com. There are lots of varieties out there and most of them have dried greens from many sources, phytonutrients and lots of vitamins. Just stir a spoonful with some water or juice and you're ready to go. I take one or two servings of a green drink every single day. I put it in a, a jar with some juice and then just shake it and um, start my day off with it every day. So start off your day with superfoods, drink it on an empty stomach about one hour before eating breakfast right after waking up for the best benefits. Get out stimulants such as coffee and tea. Once the body has detoxified it from all the garbage, the need for caffeine goes away. This is not only healthy, but it's also easier, easier on your budget. After a long night's sleep, your body is often dehydrated and craving nutrients. Drinking some water with freshly squeezed lemon juice is highly alkalizing and very nourishing for the body. Just chop one up and create a highly alkalizing beverage. And lastly, you may be wondering how to keep the body alkaline while also getting in lots of protein every day. There are alkaline sources of protein, including tofu and lentils, certain nuts like almonds and Brazil nuts, and certain grains like quinoa and spelt. There are also some very good whole food supplements that are very high in protein. Keep natural and organic if possible. So um, we've only sort of skirted a, across the tip of the iceberg here, but um, in the end, I hope this video has helped you understand the crucial importance of your bodies and your pH balance. We've only shown a tiny tip of the iceberg of how pH affects you, but I also hope that it sparked your interest in cleaning up your diet and really paying attention to what your body needs. Just making a few small additions or changes to your diet and you're bound to see some incredible changes over the long term. So that brings us to the end of this webinar. I really hope that that's been helpful and useful to you. Um, if you would like a transcript of the webinar, because there's certain things there that you might not have been able to write down, uh, drop us an email, please, at info at liveblondonline.com or liveblondlondon.com. And uh, we'll send you a transcript with uh, all the directions of the pH balancing. And don't forget to let us know if you'd also like to be included in our future webinars and videos. We do uh, videos and webinars every couple of weeks on interesting topical subjects. So um, let me see if we have any questions to answer. No, everybody seems to be OK. So thank you very much. Um, and goodbye for now. Thank you very much. Goodbye.